Okay, so now we're going to talk about Chapter 13, the PMBOK Guide, Project Stakeholder Management. Before I get started, let me mention that if you're interested, we have lots of free PMP prep materials at projectprep.org. We've got cheat sheets, full-length practice tests, note cards, lots of stuff that should be pretty helpful. So there's four processes in this knowledge area. We're identifying stakeholders and initiating, planning stakeholder management and planning, managing stakeholder engagement and executing, and then controlling stakeholder engagement and monitoring and controlling. So when we're identifying stakeholders, we're identifying anyone that could be affected by the project and trying to classify them. That's going to be important later as we figure out how to um, engage with them. So we're identifying stakeholders, and then we're planning stakeholder management, developing strategies for how to engage with those stakeholders during the project. And a lot of it's going to depend on how we classify them. And then we're going to manage stakeholder engagement, communicate with stakeholders, address their issues, and um, uh, you know just monitor those relationships. And then control stakeholder engagement, we're going to monitor and adjust plans for engaging stakeholders over time. So if things aren't working, um, we want to figure out a different way to engage with them uh, to make sure that they're appropriately involved and communicated with. Okay, so project stakeholders are anyone who may be affected by the project. They may or may not be actively involved. They may be positively or negatively affected, and they may have competing expectations. So we need to really monitor these relationships, especially the ones um, that could, especially the stakeholders, that could have a big impact on the results or the outcomes of the project. So this is just a way to think about project stakeholders. The first thing you should know is that the project team itself is actually a stakeholder on the project. It includes your project manager, your project management team, other project team members and sponsors, your project team members are a key stakeholder on the project. Other stakeholders could include a portfolio or program manager, uh, program manager, a PMO, operations management and operational stakeholders, functional managers, sellers, business partners, and so on. This is just a way to think about our stakeholders. Here's some examples of them. We could have a sponsor who provides the resources, customers who approve and manage the project's product, service, or result, Users, people who actually use whatever we're producing from the project. Sellers, people that we enter into a contract with to provide something for the project. So we talked about that last chapter in procurement management. And then organizational groups, internal groups affected by the activities of the project. Maybe the operations department is going to be affected, or the IT department, or accounting, or whatever. Okay, so now let's talk about how we're going to analyze our stakeholders. We're going to identify them and analyze them. Here's the steps that we're going to follow, and the reason why we're doing this is to figure out how to engage with them. We're going to identify all potential stakeholders and information about them, such as their roles, what they expect from the project, and how much they could influence it. And then we're going to also analyze impact and support that stakeholders could generate, and classify them, and define an approach for engaging with them. So it's going to help us prioritize our energies with our stakeholders. We got to focus on those ones that could really, in some cases, bring down the project if, if they're not satisfied. And then assess how key stakeholders are likely to re react or respond in various situations. And so we figure out then how to influence them to enhance their support. We want to get the support from key stakeholders. Here's some of the classification models we can use for stakeholder analysis. There's a power and interest grid, the power and influence grid, the influence and impact grid, and the salience model. So let's talk about each of those in just a minute. So with the power and interest grid, we're grouping stakeholders by their level of authority, how much power they have, and their level of concern or interest regarding the project outcomes. If they have a lot of authority and they're really concerned in how the you know in the outcomes of the project, those are that's somebody that we want to focus in on. Then the power and influence grid groups them on their level of authority, again, by the power that they have, and their active involvement. So the distinction between those two is the first, the power and interest grid, just kind of tracks how interested they are in the outcomes. And the power and influence grid tracks how actively involved they are. What's their influence on the project? Are they there every day? And then the influence and impact grid, uh, it tracks active involvement, their influence in the project. How actively involved are they? Are they there every day? And then the ability to affect changes to the project's planning or execution. What impact do they have 
to get to have things changed on the project. And the salience model is combining a few things. It's looking at the power of a stakeholder, the ability to impose their will, the urgency they have, the need for immediate attention, and their legitimacy, whether or not their involvement is appropriate. Do they have power? How urgent are their expectations, their needs? And are they actually a legitimate stakeholder? So these are the grids that are methods we're going to use to classify our stakeholders and help us prioritize and define how we engage with them. So here's an example of the power and interest grid. So on the um, y-axis, you're going to see power, their level of authority. And on the x-axis, you're going to see the interest, how interested they are, concerned they are about the outcomes of the project. Now, it shows you that if someone has a lot of power or authority, and they're very interested or concerned in the outcomes, that's going to be the top right corner of the diagram. And we want to manage those stakeholders closely, really monitor them. Those are key stakeholders that we need to monitor. And now if they're, they really have low authority or power and low interest or concern in the project, they're going to be in the bottom left corner. And that's just kind of monitoring those relationships. We don't need to manage them that closely. In terms of priorities, we'd focus on them after we focus in on those other stakeholders that we should manage closely and keep satisfied. Here's an example of the salience model. Remember, we're looking at three things, their power, the ability to impose their will, the urgency, their need for immediate attention, and their legitimacy, their active involvement is appropriate. Um, and you don't need to worry too much about the definitions inside of this Venn diagram, but just to understand this kind of classification model. And if someone has a lot of power, if they're actually a legitimate stakeholder, meaning they're, it's appropriate for them to be involved in the project, and they actually have immediate or immediate needs, those are stakeholders that you really want to manage very closely. They could affect a lot of change in the project, both positively or negatively. Now let's also talk for a minute about the stakeholder register. When we identify stakeholders, the key output is going to be the stakeholder register. And what's important here is that this is pretty sensitive inform information about your stakeholders. You don't want this to get, to get out. Um, and it's just going to help you to um, classify and prioritize and analyze your stakeholders to determine how to best engage with them. It could include things like identification information, their name, organization, role, location, and then assessment information, what their major requirements are and expectations are on the project, how much they could influence the outcomes, and then their classification. Are they internal or external? Are they supporter or resistor? And then we could have some of those classification models inside of it.